Lead gen forms are one of my favorite tools on pretty much any ad platform. If you're curious about why a lead generation form might be a better option than a landing page, you can check out this video right here. But one of the things that I really like about them is that the platforms want you to use them so they keep making improvements to them. They keep making updates. And Facebook has recently made a couple of updates that I think are pretty cool. They've expanded the conditional logic to the entire form, not just a single question. And they've made customizable end screens based on what answers users give. So in this video, I want to walk you through how the new conditional logic works and how the end screens work so you can have a better experience for your customers and for your sales team. I'm going to keep this video pretty focused on the specifics of the logic setting and the end screens, which might be a little bit advanced if you're not familiar with lead generation forms. So if that's you and you want to study up before you watch this video, feel free to check out our lead gen playlist that we have linked in the top portion of the video right now. Then come on back and you can watch this one. For those of you who are familiar with lead generation forms on Facebook, the idea of logic or conditional logic settings might sound familiar. And I have this search engine journal article up because it has a screenshot of something that was from November of 2021, where you can see that one of the question types was conditional to where you could change the follow up step depending on what the user's answer was to the first question. This new setting takes that quite a bit further and the entire form is going to be conditional, but I do not see this in every single one of our accounts, which is part of the reason why we're going to have the next section of this blurred out because it's only in one of our client accounts so far. So if you don't see it just yet, and I'll show you what it looks like here in just a second, you might still have this conditional option for at least a different type of question that you can use in the meantime. To start getting into how to use the logic and end screens, I'm in a client account, which I mentioned, which is why a lot of this is going to be blurred out. And I'm already down to the destination portion in our ad creative, which we selected at the ad set level is going to be instant form. So for this, I'm just going to create a new form. Next, you get to choose your form type, whether it's more volume, higher intent, or rich creative. And I'm not going to talk about each of these right now because we already have a video that shows you the different versions of each of these and how they work. All you need to know for this video is that all three are compatible with the new logic setting. I'm going to go ahead and skip the intro section and jump right to the questions portion, which is where our conditional logic setting lives. You can see here that Facebook used to call this lead filtering and it is now conditional logic. And if I toggle this switch, that notification goes away and we can start filling in our questions. Now, one thing to note is that when you're in this question section, you will have custom questions and pre-fill questions. The pre-fill questions have nothing to do with the conditional logic. All that is going to live in the custom questions section. So just keep that in mind when you're building these forms. Now let's go ahead and add a question. We still have four different options, multiple choice, short answer, appointment request, and store locator. And I'm not one to tell you what you should and shouldn't do with your lead generation forms. It's always going to be different based on your business. But for my money right now, I can't come up with good ways to use this conditional logic for short answer, appointment request, or the store locator, to be honest. Maybe I'm not creative enough, but really the only one that makes sense to me is this multiple choice. So that's the example I'm going to use. If you can figure out how to use the other ones with this conditional logic and end screens, good on you. Definitely share it with us in the comments. So let's start with my multiple choice question. As I mentioned, we're going to keep this focused. So I'm not going to talk about how to set up a question. I'm actually going to just choose one of the preset questions because I think it really helps illustrate how to use these conditional settings. So I'm going to choose timeline and now it pre fills a question. How soon do you want to buy? And based on the image on the right, let's assume that I'm selling trucks. So it's a pretty big purchase. So depending on what the answer is, that's going to lead us a lot of different directions. As you can see, there's already a set of answers here and the logic portion is going to show up based on what answer people choose. In the form preview over here on the right, you can see how soon do you want to buy and it has all these options. And the logic step is going to say when somebody clicks this right away, where do they go? So based on that, we can choose the next step. We can have them go to another question, which can be based on the same different four types. So again, multiple choice, short answer, appointment request, store locator. We can decide that we want them to submit the form and then they get to choose an end page, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Or the third option is to close the form. This is when people will not give you their information and they'll basically be exited out of the form itself. This is a new option and I'm a really big fan of it because even though somebody clicked on your ad, the form popped up and they started clicking buttons within the form, that doesn't mean that that person is qualified and it does not mean that they need to make their way into your sales pipeline. But let's say if somebody answers right away, we want to get more information from them. 
So our conditional logic is going to be to go to another question. And the option that makes the most sense for me is going to be to use a store locator, or if we want to use the vernacular for trucks, a dealership locator. I just put in a really quick message asking which location do they plan to buy from? And now I'm going to add question. You can see here that when I did that, we now have the option to select the question in case we want to send people to the same one, which will come in handy here in just a second. But let's X out of this. Now we'll scroll down just a little bit because if somebody says that they want to buy right away and then you ask them which location do they want to visit, the nice part is this store locator will pull in all of your locations from Facebook already. Granted, this account does not have any locations, so that's a little frustrating. But you can see how from a user perspective, this would be a great option for somebody to say, I'm ready to buy now, choose the location that you want from the dropdown. And then once they've filled out that option, you probably just want them to submit the form and you would send them to an end page. Before we get to end pages and end page strategy, I wanna continue talking about the conditional questions. So let's scroll back up to the first one because we've only selected logic for the first answer. We still need to do this for the rest of the different answer options. In the next month, if somebody is going to buy a truck, I think that that's probably still just dealership worthy. Which location do you plan on buying from? And now we know that one is going to go there. But the next options down here below are in the next three months or I haven't decided yet. And I'm even going to add in a different option that says I'm not buying a truck. So now we want to come up with additional follow up steps in the next three months. And I haven't decided yet. It might make sense for us to add a follow up question that asks the user what would help them make a better purchase decision. So we could come in here, go to a question, create a new question. And maybe instead of using multiple choice, we just give them short answer and we say, what would help you make a decision? Then we add the question and we could do that for I haven't decided yet as well. And again, it'll be a preset option once we have filled it out in the form already. And now we have a place where these two users can go where if they're not quite ready to purchase just yet, we're trying to get more information to help them make that purchase. So if we come down to question three, we would then need to choose the logical next step. At this point, if they're answering a short question in their own words about what other information they would need to make a purchase, that seems like submitting a form to me. Again, we would then choose the end page, which we'll get to in a minute, but I can't really think of following up an open field question with additional conditional questions because you don't know what that person added in there. So it doesn't necessarily make sense. So before we fill this out, let's go right back up to the top and fill out the last portion of question one, which is I'm not interested in buying. This is where my new sneaky favorite comes in and we can easily just choose a next step. And rather than going to an additional question or submitting the form, like we've talked about, we can just choose the close form option. This user will not give any of their information and they will see an end page that is set up for non leads. As you can see here, E2 end page for non leads is going to show up. And if we scroll all the way past the prefill questions and past the privacy policy, you'll see the end page is the new final section for a lead generation form. So let's open this one up. And now we can start talking about end pages. And then before we're finished, we'll go back and assign all of these to the different questions. So the first thing to see here is that Facebook automatically knows one of these end pages should be for a lead and one should be for a non lead. Because if you have a question that one of the conditional settings is to close the form and no information is submitted, you need to customize that final message for that user so that they know their information is not collected and you will not be following up. So let's go ahead and open this one up just by clicking into it. We'll scroll down a little bit. You can give this end page a name which will be private to you. No user will ever see it, but it will help you delineate which end screen is which. And I think end page for leads and in page for non leads is really easy to get confused. So I'm just going to name this close form because the only time a user is going to see this end page is if they closed the form and they're not giving any information. So here you would just write a short message to that degree. And although this is cheesy, it could be something like this. We're sorry to see you go. Your information is not collected. Feel free to check out our website. It's a very easy close form end screen, letting the user know that they did not submit their information and you're not following up. But we have two other options that we have people who are trying to find the dealership location, as well as people who need a little bit more time before they're ready to make a purchase. So let's scroll back up here and let's assume that end page one is going to be somebody who is ready to purchase either right away or shortly from now. Again, just the same way I want to keep these things straight. I'm going to name this dealership locator. That way, when I'm building these forms, assigning these end pages, I know which question the user came from. You could easily keep the message the same, but just augment it to talk about how you will see them at the dealership soon. Same thing here. We want to make sure that the user knows that we have gathered their information and all they need to do is head to that dealership location and we'll know exactly who you are and get you ready for what you want. 
So let's scroll back up just a little bit and assign these to the questions that we have. So again, we'll be in question one. I'm not interested in buying is gonna be the closed form, which you can see has shown up here. These other answers send people to additional questions. So question two is gonna be right away or in the next month. And we just built the in screen for that. So here, once they have chosen their location, we wanna send users to the dealership locator. Now we'll click back out of that. So the last option is gonna be what would help you make a decision. They're filling out the short form answer. So we need to customize an end page that reflects that. So if we click in here, we can easily just go to choose next step for the logic, submit the form. It'll show us the E1 dealership locator if we want to, or we can create a new end page right here. So for this one, I'm just gonna say needs more info. That tells me internally that this person is not ready to purchase, but they are interested in buying. And like you guessed, they just need more information. So now let's add the end page. That one's set up. So to customize that, we just need to scroll down, needs more info, and then we would customize this the way that we would want to. Again, this user has told you what they need to help make a purchase decision. And once they have filled out all the custom questions, you'll remember that there are going to be the personal pre-fill questions down here with email, full name, zip code, and any other pre-fill questions that you're asking about. So a salesperson can easily get in contact with them to follow up with the exact information that they just requested. So this description here just says an associate will follow up and help answer any questions you have. So not only do these new conditional logic questions and in screens help set a better precedent for the user knowing what to expect, but also this example right here shows you this can also help your sales team make any of the sales that you need because they have a lot more information about what the user wants or needs to help make a purchase, at least in this example. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a big fan of these adjustments to the new forms. If you don't see them showing up in your account just yet, be patient. I'm sure they're rolling out across the board. But if you have any additional questions about this new lead generation form logic setting or any of the end pages and strategy that goes into it, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.